We think too much and feel too little. Poetry, beauty, romance, love. These are what we stay alive for. Life exists and identity. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about something that I feel like it's been on the tip of my tongue for a very long time and I haven't quite found the words to use to describe the concept. As you guys can tell, I have some notes back here of what I wanna talk about in this video because I can never stay on topic. It's very strange how certain things just keep like resurfacing in life. I actually saw in one of my friend Amy Lee's videos, she was talking about how, you know, the lesson will keep presenting itself to you until you learn it, until you take a stab at it. It's gonna keep nagging at you, keep presenting itself to you until you handle it. There are lessons presenting themselves to me that I just, I run from, I run from all responsibility, I sprint. I sprint from responsibility. I'm like, mm, not today. I'll handle that another day. I'll handle that when I have this or I don't have this and I can, you know, when's that day gonna come? <laughs> Let's hang on to that topic and just like set it there for a second. So it's my new thing now that every new year I've decided I'm gonna have a word that's kind of like just the cornerstone of the new year. Everything that I do, everything that I build upon this cornerstone word has to do with the concept. So my word this year is intentional and not really in the sense of being really rational. I wanna take the word intentional into a different realm and focus a lot on my feelings this year. People say I'm too dramatic, people say I'm too emotional sometimes, and what I have to say to them is, I feel things, I stop to feel, and you're too afraid to. So, I can agree, sometimes you do have to be rational about things, and do have to have, you know, your, your mind out there more so than your heart. Some people are just afraid to feel. It's a lot easier to trust your head and not your heart, and to you know, make up logical explanations for things. Sometimes things don't happen for a reason. Sometimes things just happen because of... I can't even put a word there because sometimes things just happen, okay? And they're not pretty and they don't make sense. And that is when our minds can't come to a logical explanation for things and we have to instead turn to feeling and you know, kind of heal ourselves, mend ourselves. And what I'm thinking about right now when I'm saying this is, you know, currently I've, I've been, I mean, of course I'm basing a lot of this on personal experiences and my friends and what we've been going through recently. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with unrequited love. And that doesn't just mean in a romantic sense, it can mean you know, with family and things like that. And there's been a lot in my circle of friends that's been happening recently where I've, it, it's really tough because I want to be there for people. And I obviously want to offer an explanation for something, expl I can't talk, explanation for something that makes sense logically and they can just sit there and be like, aha, you know, like that makes sense. But sometimes all you can say is, I'm really sorry that that happened. I don't know why it happened, but how are you feeling and what can we do to make you feel better? Because Sometimes shit just happens. It hits the fan. It happens. You're in a rut. You just feel like you you just don't know why Something is happening. You don't know why you're feeling something you feel something one day And then the next day you don't feel that and you're like what like what that's life life doesn't make sense And life is messy and a lot of times all we can rely on we can't always rely on logic Okay, sometimes two plus two doesn't equal four. Okay, and like non-mathematical senses, if you know what I mean. It's a kind of like a metaphor, but. And in those moments, we can't trust logic. We have to trust feeling. And I think that a lot of our society thinks way too much and feels too little. And I mean, this can be said in like a personal sense, in a romantic sense, but it can also be said in a lot of just things in history, okay? I was reading this book actually recently. If you have this book or if you wanna pick up this book, it's called Creative Blindness and How to Cure It by Dave Trott. It's basically all obviously about creative blindness, so just ways that creative people have been able to solve some of life's biggest challenges. So on page 64, he has this mini story. It's called Show Don't Tell. So 1911 was when the first escalator came to be, okay? I think it was somewhere in Europe. He doesn't say, but in 1911, they called it a mechanical staircase and people were so afraid of the mechanical staircase and the company that manufactured 
the escalator. I'm gonna call it an escalator from now on. It was there, it was logical, it made sense, it was easy to use, as we know, but people were afraid of it. In the early 1900s, women had these long skirts, they had kids that, you know, on their hip, and they were terrified that their long skirts were gonna get caught in the moving staircase. And they're like, this is too much, like I'd just rather take the stairs, even if it means taking multiple flights of stairs with babies and stuff, because I don't wanna get stuck in this mysterious moving staircase machine. And so the companies were baffled because they're like, you know, thinking logically, why wouldn't people want to take the staircase and they didn't know this. They didn't know that women were fearful of this. They just thought that people were afraid of new things. And so they weren't really feeling, they weren't putting themselves in the shoes of women and just people that are fearful, people that, you know, just look at things that are kind of scary and are like, oh, no, thank you. One detail that I left out was that the first um, escalator was actually at a railroad or like a railway, the underground basically. And so they had a bunch of employees that worked at the railroad and one of the guys named William Bumper Harris, he was an employee who had lost a leg in an accident. And so basically what they did was they hired him to just go, he had one leg, so he had like a peg leg, I think. Let me make sure. A oh, one-legged man with crutches, so he didn't even have a peg leg. They hired him to stand on the escalator and just go up and down all day long because people saw him and were like, oh, if this guy with one leg and crutches can take the escalator, I can take the escalator. And so from there, you know, the fear was lifted. People weren't as fearful to take the escalator. Women with skirts just knew that like, you know, if this guy with crutches can do it, I can do it with a skirt, you know? And so, and they said that's how the best advertising works. Demonstration, not empty claims. And I think also just an element of it that, you know, obviously in marketing and stuff like demonstration, you have to show people, not just tell. And that's how honestly a lot of our marketing campaigns at L'Oreal were when I worked there. I think it's the best lesson any brand can learn that you should show, not just tell everyone everything because sometimes people need to see something to believe it, of course. Regardless of that, I think that also just you need to think about how people feel. Something new comes out every second, okay? A baby is born like every millisecond upon millisecond. It's like something new comes out into the world and we have to digest it somehow. And I think that people forget that we need more humanity, okay? People think with their heads, they don't think with their hearts or even like give their hearts a time of day. Most of the time they don't feel. And there's so much wrong with that, you know, given just what we're going through right now, the Australian bushfires. I'm gonna have a link down below to where you can donate, actually. I've donated twice already to the Red Cross, the Australian Red Cross, a little side note, but people have kind of forgotten their humanity and they use their heads way too much. They think about, you know, how can I gain status? How can I gain money? How can I just be cooler? That's another thing. I think a lot of people, you know, are like, okay, what job with this huge title can I get? Like, what can make me sound the coolest at a bar when I'm introducing myself and saying this is where I work? But I think what the world needs is less clout chasers, less people that are just trying to be cooler. I think we need people that are just trying to be kinder, leave a lasting, imprint on this world something that makes the world a little bit better when you're like going to someone's house you're staying there or something my mom's always like leave it better than when you found it or like make sure to always leave things better than when you found them and it's true i think that we should all leave this world a little bit better than when we found it and that sounds emotional it sounds like super cheesy but it's just so true okay because so many of us just exist in this world we drag ourselves through the same you know just like what are those things called? Like my stairs here are kind of like it at this, um, my building. It's like, you know, so many people have walked down the same part of the stair that it's like worn down. And I imagine that a lot of us that do the same thing every single day and just kind of drag ourselves from one thing to the next is like, there's like actual indentations in the ground where we drag ourselves. Like I visualize it like that. And I feel like it's time that we kind of, you know, slowly dip our toe outside of those ruts. I guess it's a rut, right? Is that what you call it? I think it's important for us all to be a little bit more understanding of other people. I think, you know, I was talking to someone recently who was like, I wanna start blogging, I wanna, you know, make a blog or start talking on my Instagram story. Like that's a big fear for some people. I do it because I've I've been ridiculed for this for so long that it's just become I'm used to it now. And like, you know, come at me. I've heard way worse, you know, from like an early age. And so I and I forget that some people haven't dealt with that sort of thing. And so I mean, people are afraid to start things just because they're afraid of what people are gonna say, which is so valid because 
believe me, I know that's a big fear. I still have moments, I'm not perfect, I still have moments where I just get so overcome with sadness when I get hate comments, when I, you know, people that I know in, you know, my friend groups, not my friends, but like, you know, people that I like go out with sometimes and know from college, like I, when I know they're making fun of me, when I know my story is being shared because people are making fun of me, like that hurts my feelings obviously, but I think it's about time that maybe we're a little bit more understanding of other people and believe me, I've, I'm guilty of making fun of people sometimes. There I said it, okay, I've done it. It's not kind, it's not understanding, it's not the way that I wanna be known, <laughs> you know? And there's that quote, it's like, you die twice, once when you actually leave the earth and then the next time when the last person you know says your name, like once your name is said for the last time, like the last generation has died off and that's the last person that knew you and you know, that's when you truly die. We have this huge opportunity and a lot of people don't think about it much because you know there's a lot to think about on a daily basis. I don't blame the people that don't really give this much thought, but we all have this really great opportunity to leave a lasting imprint on this world, even if it's something so small. We truly all get to contribute a verse to the play. I love that movie so much. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. Love that movie so much. You guys saw it in the intro, but I think that a lot of us feel that we don't really have purpose or we lose our purpose in this world and we just don't know why we're doing what we're doing. Could I be doing something else? And we think, or you know, oh, could I be living somewhere else? Like, is this right? And we spend our days elsewhere, you know, not really even present where we are because we're wondering if we're even in the right place and it's just where our heads are constantly in other places. You know, with my word intentional, trying to, and what that really means to me is every action, everything I'm doing, I have to be doing it for some reason. And I want most of that reason to be deep inside of me, you know, like I'm doing this thing because I'm fearful of X. There's all these feelings and things that I'm afraid of. And I think 2020 for me is all about just like facing those fears one at a time and knowing at least, you know, if I fall on my face, I tried for something and that's more than people do. Some people do in a lifetime. Okay, trying for something once a week that might not go well, like, come on, that's that's living, that's not existing, that's living. And I know it's so, this whole concept, this whole thing is so cliche and it's so hard to get this into people's heads. It's so hard to get this into my own head because I just sit here and I'll be probably watching this video back as I'm editing and thinking, ugh, this is so, like, people are gonna think this is so cheesy. But I think that, you know, it comes down to habit. It comes down to if you hear something enough, if you keep seeing signs for something, you know, maybe this is a sign for you. Maybe you were thinking about this whole concept and this is just another little like reaffirming sign that you need to do it. You need to do that thing you're afraid of. If that's what it is for you, I chalk it up as a success because that's all I really want in this world. I just wanna be the reason that someone does something, does something, period, <laughs> you know? Like I just wanna be the reason that someone does something scary, does something that maybe gets them absolutely no monetary or status gain, but just is something that gets their bellies all fiery because that is something that I believe in and that I think is important. And you know, I, I've come to realize recently that I am truly an empath through and through. My friend Amy Lee has a great video on that if you guys aren't sure what an empath is. But I feel things so deeply and I used to be so ashamed of them, of these feelings and of, of the whole concept of feeling so deeply. And I used to feel really just almost like I was intruding on someone's life because I would just, you know, I would kind of, without knowing I would pry because I want to know why they're feeling the way that they're feeling and like all these things. And I used to be so just embarrassed by my feelings and I think, first of all, I'm going to say it now, 2020 is the year where I'm not afraid of my feelings anymore because Feeling is so courageous. Feeling is the only hope that we have in this world. Because, I mean, I was just talking to a friend last night about it. Like, a lot of our world right now is going absolutely to shit. I mean, so much is going wrong and not a lot is going right. Even as the year feels fresh, it's freshest it will ever be right now in the beginning, I still feel like a lot of us are kind of losing hope. And feeling is the only way around that finding our humanity again when it feels like it's lost, when we feel like there's no hope, when we feel like people are, you know, the, the leaders of our world are using their heads way too much. The only way that we can combat that is continuing to feel, even though, you know, it's perceived as being 
weak or it's perceived as being you know, cheesy, kind of cliche, any of those things, that's the only thing that's keeping the goodness in this world. And you'll see the goodness. You'll see it in small little ways in your day to day. And you'll think, gosh, like that was so, you know, if you witness a cute moment or someone pays for your coffee or just, I don't know, a number of little sweet, cute things that happen, <laughs> sweet, cute things, just good things that happen, good things that happen in our day to day. People that we meet and we're like, wow, where have you been my whole life? A number of things that are good in this world, they would not exist if there weren't people like you and me that still feel. I just think we should all strive to be a little bit easier on ourselves and easier on other people, put simply. And it's tough because we've been taught our whole lives to know how to live. This is how you do things. This is how you do math. This is how you, you know, do long division. This is how you do this. And we're taught a lot and we're told and we're kind of a product of every thing we've ever heard from any person we've ever met. And it's tough to differentiate what thoughts are yours and what thoughts are someone else's that you just crammed into your mind and decided are yours. And you know, what is actually yours? What are, you know, what dreams are actually your dreams? And what dreams are your dad's dreams or your friend's dreams? Like what dreams are yours? And what, <laughs> what do you actually want to do? We consume so many messages every single day. You know, messages as in text messages, but messages also as in advertisements and songs we listen to, the lyrics are messages. Everything that we look at, that we read, that we listen to, you are going to consume these things and you're going to have a decision to make when you consume these things. You get the creative freedom to decide how you're gonna warp this, how you're gonna mesh it into your daily life. You can't always just accept things how they're given to you and I think that's a huge miss that many of us experience. We have the power to choose a lot of things that we think we don't, but you know, it's a lot easier to just accept things how they're given to us and to not sit back and think like, how do I feel about this? How do you expect to connect with someone if you don't put yourself in their shoes and feel for them, feel with them, feel as them, feel as yourself with them? I hope this is a sign for you that maybe you should spend the next few days the next few weeks, the next few months, feeling a little bit more than you're thinking because you're thinking too much and you're driving yourself crazy. So guys, that is my little video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little chat. Um, it was just kind of me rambling about things I've been thinking about recently. And so I thought that I would just kind of address this, you know, throw it out into the world. And I'd love to hear your opinions on this and how you guys combat the whole overthinking movement that we're all a part of. and. Would just love to hear even if you have words for 2020 that you're trying to focus on let me know those as well and i'm really looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on this and i hope you guys are having a great day until next time